So what we can do when it comes to protecting cables is to use a similar idea. Now I'm going to grab a couple of cables here and we're just gonna take them and cut them open and take a look at the inside and see what they've done in order to be able to create a good electromagnetic fence. That will help to stop the crosstalk of the electrical energy between speaker cables and power cords and interconnects. So we got our cut open here. So first of all, we take this first one, we pull it back, and then we pull back the second one, and we take a look uh, here on the inside. So UL listing and a few things like that on there. And then we chop her open. And we've got, uh, like I told you, paper was commonly used. So there's paper, the first di uh, dielectric layer. Then we've got uh, the same on the outside. We've got some plastic. And then we've got a few uh, larger conductors that are plastically shielded, or have plastic shielding on those inside. And just to make sure that we're not missing something, let's go cut open the hot conductor here and make sure that we're not missing anything. And there we go. Um, that's what it is. So it's just paper and plastic that's protecting against electromagnetic shields here or electromagnetic fields in this particular cable. Um, so that shows us what, what those guys are, are doing. The next one we want to cut open is this guy here. Um, it doesn't have a brand name on it or anything like that, which is just fine. There's a lot of guys out there that are just making cables and um, selling them that um, have thought they've come across something great, so they want to offer it. And uh, we'll just see what this one has done for electromagnetic shielding. So again, we've got plastic, we've got another layer of plastic, um, and then we've got another layer of plastic. Now this is, this is a little more dense plastic, which I kind of like personally. Um, if you're going to use that as a dielectric layer, that's a good idea for it to be fairly dense so that, it, that the vibration is reduced a little bit. Um, we've got a conductor inside there. Let's open that guy up. Just make sure again we're not missing anything. No, it's just plastic again. So the plastic and then your conductors. So that looks like uh, a tin copper, I'd assume. Maybe silver coated even, who knows? So I'd, I would suggest though it's probably tinned. Um, let's look for another one here. What else do we have? Uh, okay, this guy here is the next one we're going to do. Let's cut him open and find out what he's all about. So we've got a layer of plastic, a layer of fairly rubbery plastic. It's uh, amazing how many of these are strange once you open them and uh, not quite as esoteric as one would think. Um, so we take a look here and what we've got on this one is a, uh, a nice aluminum braid. It looks like it's probably just straight aluminum. It could be a tinned copper. Very, very hard to tell on that particular guy. And then we've got another uh, aluminum braid going here and but the three conductors on the inside still are right against each other so this cable would have a relatively decent protection on the outside against outside magnetic interference but between the ground the hot and the neutral there doesn't seem to be anything protecting them from each other hmm. okay um, let's open one more here Oh, I think I recognize this little fella. That's our own testament cable. Well, we thought if it was fair to cut everybody else's cables open, um, we should cut our cable open too. So let's take a look inside a testament. Now, one of the things, first of all, that um, we, we did do is we put in the cable into three separate jackets. 
So each one of these is individually shielded. And you can actually see the shield right from the outside in the Testament. Now all virtual dynamics cables are constructed like this. And basically what this does is this builds a fence for each one of the conductors. There's a hot, there's a neutral, and there's a ground, and each one of them are separately shielded from each other. As you separately shield the hot, the neutral, and the ground, there's going to be a lot less crosstalk, especially because inside each one of them is that same idea where there's kind of like a copper tube, a little, by, little like uh, the same idea as what the harmonic cable had. And this guy here has copper and uh, it's, a, it's a tin copper, so um, over top, be underneath that, there's an aluminum cage. And what happens is electricity flows through the conductor. This one has both a mylar and an air dielectric on, the, uh, on this particular cable, um, which is the testament. And as that energy flows through um, that cable, the electromagnetic fields are stopped um, by this fence that we call a ground fence. And uh, similar, ag again, to the idea that uh, how the harmonic cable had protected, uh, been protected from the outside interference of uh, energies coming through, although this one here has protection on all three strands. So that's basically it for cables. Let's go back to this one here and see what we could do in order to be able to give this just a little bit of help. Now, the biggest problem when I look at this is that these transformers are sitting wide out in the open. Because they're sitting wide out in the open like that, their electromagnetic fields are going to be going everywhere inside this chassis, and they're going to be saturating all of this area over here with their electromagnetic fields, causing all sorts of problems sonically. So what could we do to prevent against that? Well, fortunately, we don't have to do anything, because this particular manufacturer has already built a fence for us. Now, this fence is very effective because it's actually made out, made out of steel. And as you can see here, my magnet will stick to it just fine. And because it's a ferrous material, it's going to do an excellent job of being able to protect these transformers from having their magnetic field go out of there. Now you could go even farther, and you could also clad that with copper. So copper and steel together would make the ultimate cage in order to be able to have a great protection of the transformers against the rest of the circuit. For now, that's all we wanted to show you, is just a little bit more about electromagnetic interference and what exactly happens in high-end audio. Of course, to build the best high-end audio equipment, you really want to have the best electrical components possible, meaning the most efficient electrical components possible. So we need to understand EMI more and more, and we're learning more about it all the time. If you have any questions about electromagnetic interference, call us at Virtual Dynamics at 1-877-347-4489 or see our website, www.virtualdynamics.ca. I'm Rick Schultz. Wow, 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 wow.